on for a reason. So I'm going to use them for the glory of his name and not for my personal adornment. I was sent here on an SOS mission from the Lord, saving souls across his land, guiding them back towards him as a reimbursement of my praise, letting you know that I too have been exactly where you are. Once afraid to leave my trials and tribulations, now standing before you as a survivor, look, I've been there. I was afraid to let go, but God reminded me that he is here for me whenever I am ready to come back home. See, I serve a forgiving God. I serve a loving God. I serve a God that is worthy of all my praise, but don't get me wrong. This mission that I am on is definitely not an easy one. At times, it's sending back to a time of uncertainty. But then I hear a voice that whispers to me, letting me know that he sent me back to this place. Not for me to dwell in the test, but to gain confidence to share the testimony. And this is the story of how I made it over. She is a female soul of her African descendants, standing in stride of extreme abuse and oppression, based upon the faulty perceptions of racial immortality. They call you the mother of civilization. One who recognizes your weaknesses as well as your strengths. You are the helpmate, the soulmate, the right hand, the better half. You are the ancestor, the creator, the forebearer, the origin, the procreator, and the source. You are your sister's keeper. You are your mother's child. You are the pink ribbon that dances in victory across that midnight sky. You are a leader, a teacher, and God's fighting warrior. Who are you? Huh? You are whoever we need you to be. Our high expectations, our good days and bad, you can be also our worst headache. A diamond in the rough, trying to be the shoulder that you cry on at night. Half of our team that brings your own independence to the table, creating something strong within each and every one of us. You are a natural born leader, taking a stand for what you believe in, becoming the CEO of your own company, fighting to be the lead in the place, still seeking to be the class president from your childhood. Who are you? Who are you? You are a goddess. You are a queen. You are our mother, our sister, and our closest of friend. You are the epitome of black excellence. You exude all that black girl magic. You are and always will be that black girl that rocks. How y'all doing, Rockefellers? Thank you to everyone for inviting me out here. Um, soul poetry and the whole entire family. This next poem is very, very dear to my heart. Um, back in 2020, a young uh, friend of mine, he was shot and killed by police. And... I usually do an Artists Unite rally to show tri um, tribute to him, but this year I decided to do something different. I decided to just celebrate his name. So this is dedicated to him, Joshua J. Johnson. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for the mother who still hasn't been told when she's going to see her son. The father asking questions of what happened that morning. Their son laid in the streets for hours that day. Body is now shaped as an act of violence. I guess this is what God says is his divine creation, right? Houston Chronicles newspaper reads April 22nd. Joshua J. Johnson was shot and killed by an uncover cop. But there's no proof of exactly what happened. However, it says, he walked up to me. He shined a light through my car window. I rolled it down, he shined the light in my face and pulled out a replica of a gun. Not at all true, but however, that's what happens when you shoot first and ask questions later. Not knowing what exactly happened, but it's your word versus his. However, your word is now six feet under. Can't even much tell which way is up from down. My friend may never get the chance to see life again, however, the person who shot and killed him goes home happily every single night. Kiss his child goodnight. Hug his wife. Call his mother on Mother's Day and call his father on Father's Day. But my friend, when will he be able to tell the world what happened that morning? What happened between the hours of 5.55 a.m. and 7 p.m. when 
it was reported to the police. What exactly happened when the police officer drove away from the scene of the crime while my friend's body lies in the cold streets that morning? What happens when there's no one else to see the scene of the crime but you and God? How many times do we have to keep on seeing the same thing plastered on the television, but they tell us to shut up? They tell us to be quiet. They tell us, oh, you're bringing up old news, right? No, I'm bringing up the present, trying to realize when this day will be our next day and when we can finally breathe again, breathe new life, see forever in the eyes of destiny. I swear I was dressed in God's armor, but I still pray for better days. I swear I still call his mother so that there is someone who can call her that day. He was the only child, a man of honor, a Navy man, but they don't know that. They think he was just another thug trying to, realize, trying to do something different, trying to change the world one man at a time, but still they don't ask these questions. They expect for us just to surrender. I guess liberty is not meant for all. Goddess Fee, y'all have a good night.